जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी अवस्थी एंड आई एम असोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन ईसी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद सो दिस वीडियो इज बेसिकली ऑन द वायरलेस एंड मोबाइल कम्युनिकेशन के ई सी जीरो सेवन सिक्स ऑफ ए के टी यू फाइनल ईयर सब्जेक्ट एंड टूडे आई बी कवरिंग सेलुलर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेलुलर सिस्टम कॉम्पोनेट्स इन दिस वीडियो सो दीज आर द की टॉपिक्स दैट वी विल डिस्कस टूडे first why cellular technology what is the need of cellular technology then cells clusters cell splitting frequency reuse concept operation of uh, cellular system and hand off general assignments cellular interference so these are the key topics that we will discuss in this video today so let's start with the first which is the introduction i mean what is the need of this uh, cellular concept so earlier before the cellular concept the entire coverage area the entire coverage area was covered was covered by a single high power transmitter and all the subscribers which were there in that particular area were assigned a different frequency channels so there were many limitations many disadvantages of this and the main disadvantage of this uh, system was the spectral congestion because each subscriber uh, will be using a different frequency band so there was no concept of frequency reuse there second this high power transmitter was also not very good uh, for the human health also because it was uh, transmitting a very high radiations very huge radiations so because of that to avoid that spectral congestion and to replace this high power transmitter by the small power transmitters we have come up with a solution which is known as cellular concept so cellular concept was a major breakthrough in solving problems of spectral congestion and to increase the capacity it offered very high capacity in a limited spectral allocation without any major technological changes so the cellular concept is a system level idea which calls for replacing these high power transmitters by small small transmitters in a particular area or can say in the in the entire coverage area so this high power transmitter uh, were replaced by different low power transmitters okay so that's why a large cell was replaced by smaller cells each providing coverage to only a small portion of the service area a cell is a very uh, what is a cell so cell is a very basic geographical unit of cellular system it is the basic unit and the term cellular concept comes from the honeycomb structure or honeycomb shape of the areas into which a coverage region is divided cell wise one base station provide transmission over a small geographical area cell size uh, vary depending upon the landscape means uh, that cell shape is the hexagon shape that we will consider and because of this hexagon shape it is also known as honeycomb uh, shape or honeycomb structure and this cell size is not fixed for entire uh, area it will vary depending upon the landscape whether uh, the service is provided into land on land or it is provided on hills on mountains so based upon the landscape your cell size will be varying also your cell size will also vary depending upon the type of area means you are providing the service in urban area rural area or suburban area so there are many constraints uh, which were imposed in natural terrain and man made structures so because of that uh, we go for hexagon structure and with the very cell size a group of cell now we'll come to the cluster so what do you mean by a cluster so uh, uh, the cluster is actually a group of cell and the size of the cluster uh, is denoted as capital n okay so let's say if we have this one cell okay this is another cell and this is another cell so each cell will be having its own base station antenna okay so a group of cell is known as a cluster and that cluster size can be uh, can be of four, seven, twelve, nineteen, based upon a specific formula. So there is this uh, this figure shows a specific cluster which is a seven cell cluster, and each cluster is allocated different set of frequencies. So 
cell 1 will be having different set of frequencies, cell 2 will be having different set of frequencies, likewise cell 3, cell 4, cell 5, cell 6 and cell 7 will be using different different set of frequencies. So, how we can, how we can calculate the cluster size, how this n will be decided? So, n will be decided by this, uh, uh, this way, like this is the, uh, this is the cluster where we can see and let us say this is cluster 1. So, cluster 1, uh, it will be represented by i and j. We have a formula of this which is n equals to i square plus j square plus i j. This is the formula to calculate the cluster size where i is the non-negative integers and j is the determine, j determine the relative location of co-channel cell. So, how we will decide the co-channel cell? I will provide you the vertical move and j will provide you the horizontal move, vertical move like this. So, if I want to see like uh, at which place I can use the same set of frequency that I can use uh, by using this formula. So, from cluster 1, I will be moving towards uh, vertically downward. So, I will be 2 and then here uh, this j is horizontal move. So, here you can see that after i equals to 2 and j equals to 1, the same set of frequencies can be used in this cluster. Okay. So, this is how uh, the combination of cells are decided okay, by which we can calculate the, uh, the frequency reuse. So, the size of a cell depends on the density of subscriber in the area. The capacity of a network in a density uh, populated area can be improved by reducing the size of the cell or by increasing the number of cell along with the installing low power base stations. Uh, this will effectively increase the number of channels in the area because of more frequency reuse. On the basis of their size, cell can be defined as macro cell, micro cell, pico cell and femto cell. So, here we can see the formula of cluster size and based on this formula, we can have 4, 7, 9, 12, 13, 16 and 19 cluster size. So, here this is 4 cell reuse, this is 7 cell reuse and this is 12 cell reuse structure. Here you can see, so the concept of using uh, frequency reuse is to use the same set of channels by two different cells at the same time keeping a minimum distance apart. It means if this, uh, if I have a total number of 100 channels available with me, so I will in a particular geographical area for a cluster size 7, those all channels will be allocated to this cluster and then this cluster will be repeated multiple times in this geographical area. So, same set of uh, 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 channels are allocated to this point, same set of channels are allocated to this point and at a particular instant of time, same set of channels will be used by all these clusters at the same time. So, this is how if I have 100 channels allocated with me, I can reuse those channels at the same time by two different users. Okay? So, this concept is known as frequency reuse. Okay? Now, uh, so, so this is what I have discussed. A radio channel consists of a pair of frequencies for full duplex operations. So, what is this full duplex? Uh, full duplex means I have two different channels, one for transmission, another for re uh, reception. Uh, in simplex, I have only one channel that I will use either for transmission or for reception. So, that is known as simplex. In uh, wireless communication, we use duplex channels, one for transmission and one for reception. So, the concept of frequency reuse is based on assigning each cluster the same group of radio channels uh, within a small geographical area. These channels will be repeated by two different clusters or many clusters at the same time. So, this is how the number of times of a repetition we will increase the capacity. If I have 100 channels and I am repeating those uh, and which are allocated to one cluster. So, I can repeat this, uh, this cluster multiple times. Let us say if I have repeated this cluster 100 times. So, by which I can increase the capacity by 100 into 100. So, this is how the capacity is increased by repetition of those clusters. Okay? So, this, is, uh, this occurs because of the frequency reuse. So, a set of n different frequency groups f1 to f1, uh, f, fn is used for each cluster of n 
adjacent cells and shared among the cell almost equally. The set of frequencies assigned to a cell is completely different from that of the assigned to the neighboring cell. The coverage area of cell is called the footprint. So, what is the footprint? Footprint means the coverage of a particular cell by the outer boundary of the cell. So, if there are 7 members in a cluster, number of available frequency set is 7. The frequency reuse factor is 1 upon 7 then. So, if the cluster size is 12, then 1 upon 12 will be the frequency reuse factor. This means that each cell uses 1 seventh of the available uh, cellular channel for reuse. So, let us say if I have 4, n equals to 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it is a n equals to 4 cluster. So, if I have n equals to 4 cluster size, so here I can see if I have total allocated channels 100, so 100 will be divided into these 4 clusters. So, 100 means 25, 25, 25 and 25. Fine. So, 25 channels will be allocated to each cluster. So, let us say L is the total number of duplex channels available for reuse that is the frequency per cluster. Small k is the number of duplex channels allocated to each cell of a cluster. So, k will be less than that of L because L is the total number of uh, available spectrum and small k is the number of duplex channels allocated to each cell of a cluster. N is the cluster size, M is the number of times your cluster is repeated and C is the capacity. So, we have a formula which is L equals to k into n where L is the total number of channels, k is the number of channels allocated to a particular cluster and n is the cluster size. Now, the capacity, capacity C will be number of time of repetition into the number of channels available, total set of channels available. So, here C will be m into L. So, the number of times as I am increasing the, as I am increasing the repetition, so I can increase the, increasing M will leads to increasing capacity. There is a, there is a glitch here. What is that glitch? If you are increasing the, uh, the, the cluster repetition, we can increase the capacity. So, there is a trade-off, trade-off between, trade-off between the, uh, the capacity enhancement and the interference. So, if we are increasing the repetition, so, capacity is also increased, but at the same time, interference will also increase. So, because of that, there is a trade-off. We can increase the cluster uh, repetition, but keep it in mind that interference should be within limits. Okay. Now, coming to the next topic, this is all about the cellular uh, uh, basics. Now, coming to the next topic, which is handoff. So, yes, we are talking about the mobile communication, right? So, mobile communication means we are not stable or standing at one place. We will move from this place to another place, this place to another place. Likewise, like we are moving from one cell to another cell, okay? Another cell to another cell, okay? So, we are moving from this cell to this cell and this cell to this cell, right? Because this communication is not fixed communication, it is mobile communication. So, once you are moving from one base station to another base station, from this base station to this, from this to this, so then you are allocated to this particular base station. I mean, all the channels which are allocated to this base station, you are allocated the free channels of this base station. Now, as you are moving from this to this point, then you need to find the free spectrum available with that base station. And then once you are moving from this base station to this base station, then again you need to find the free spectrum available. So, the process of handing over or handoff is to provide the information of all, all the information of that particular user who is moving from one base station to another base station. So, it is basically the process of transferring ongoing call or data connectivity from one base station to another base station. So, let us say we are moving from uh, cell 1 to cell 2, cell 2 to cell 3, cell 3 to cell 4. So, my all call information or data information will be provided by this base station to another base station and all these processes are controlled by the MSC. 
So what is this MSC? MSC is the mobile switching center, which is the hub of your wireless communication, which will be having all the information about the base station, about the mobile, about the subscriber. So all the informations are available with the MSC. So when a mobile moves into different cells, while the conversation is in process, then the MSC or the mobile switching center transfer the call to a new channel belonging to a new base station because you 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 left that particular base station and you are moving to another base station right so all the call information and your call is in progress right maybe you are you are in a car or maybe you are in a train or in a moving vehicle so speed maybe 120 100 90 so based on that, uh, that speed uh, your uh, this process will be very fast okay so all the information about your call about your data network internet every information will be transferred from one base station to another another to another and another to another so this process is very fast and this whole process is controlled by the mobile switching center the type of hand handoffs so there are basically two type of handoffs hard handoff and soft handoff so what is this hard handoff when there is an actual break in the connectivity while switching from one base station to another base station so this is known as hard handoff when there is a break where uh, there is no burden on the base station and an msc because the switching takes place so quickly that it can hardly be noticed by the user the connection quality is not that good hard handoff process adopted the break before make policy means if you are moving from one base station to another so for a few uh, milliseconds or microseconds your call will be disconnected uh, call will be on uh, not disconnected it will kind of hold uh, you will not uh, you know find it because it is very fast process but uh, it, it is known as break means break means you 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 have uh, means your connection with this uh, base station will be break and then you will be connected with the another base station so that's why it is known as break before make policy okay so this is known as hard handoff another one is soft handoff soft handoff means at least one of the link is kept when radio signal are added or removed to the base station means you are not completely uh, uh, broken the link uh, you will be having at least one link available soft handoff adopted the make before bake process or the policy soft handoff is more costly because uh, because there is there is additional link which you need every time and which should be available with every user so that's why it is bit costlier as compared to hard handoff now coming to the next topic of this wireless communication which is the channel assignment channel assignment means how you will assign the frequencies or uh, how this assignment frequency assignment takes place in cellular communication so we have um, different channel assignment strategies so first strategy is fixed channel assignment strategy assignment means like if you have a, a cluster size of seven right and you have 100 channels available so how you will decide which channel will be allocated to which cell and how many channels will be allocated allocated to which cell so this uh, the, we have different policies of this and the first policy which is known as the fixed channel assignment policy in the fixed channel assignment policy each channel uh, each cell is allocated a predetermined set of voice channels see in this wireless communication we have two type of channels first is voice channel second is control channel so uh, each and every uh, cell will be having fixed set of voice channels only the unused channel in a particular cell can serve any call attempt within that cell okay so if we have fixed if we have assigned all the channels to a cell right and if uh, another user wants a channel for the call for the call purpose so there are very few channels which are available as a spare and those channels can be used in that case and if all the channels are occupied then the call will be blocked or the subscriber will not get any service so let's say if i have assigned all the channels to all the users right and if another user maybe in the uh, the user which is coming from another base station if he wants that uh, free channel so he will not be receiving any free channel and his call will be blocked or terminated because of non availability of the channel because i have already assigned all the channel to all the cells so that's why it is known as fixed next strategy is borrowing strategy borrowing strategy means uh, a cell is allowed to borrow a channel from a neighboring cell if all of its own channels are occupied so let's say i'm in base station one 
and my user or subscriber is asking for a channel but i don't have any spare channel so what i'll do i'll request another base station and i'll ask for a uh, few uh, channels to provide the service of my subscriber so this is known as the borrow uh, strategy here your msc or the mobile switching center supervises the borrowing procedure and ensure that the borrowing of the channel does not in disrupt or interfere uh, with any other call which is in progress in the donor cell let's say if i have two cells cell 1 and cell 2 okay so let's say all the channels which are allocated to this cell are occupied and some roamer is coming from another base station to this base station and it is asking for a few channels so i will borrow few channels from the neighboring cell so this neighboring cell will provide you with uh, me the channel keeping it in mind uh, that uh, it will not uh, you know uh, hang its own service now we have dynamic channel assignment strat strategy which is the third one, third one so in dynamic channel assignment voice channels are not allocated permanently in any of the cell so no channel is allocated uh, permanently okay when a call request is made the serving base station request a channel from the msc so whenever a request came from the user that particular channel will be assigned to that particular user okay which is then allocates a channel to the requested cell so the uh, advantages and disadvantages of this method are mentioned here advantages uh, of the dynamic channel assignment strategy is the likelihood of call blocking reduces because we have dynamic strategy and our channels can be used efficiently co channel interference reduces the uh, channel utilization increases okay so spectrum efficiency increases here so this is the disadvantage because it is uh, making the extra burden on msc now coming to the next topic which is the cellular interference so uh, in this particular cellular system we can see there are two type of interferences which are there first is co channel interference second is adjacent channel interference so what is this co channel interference as we know that in this particular cellular communication two cells are using let's say if i am uh, if i am using four channel four cell reuse cluster okay 1 2 3 4 similarly 1 2 3 4 correct so in this frequency reuse what what is this frequency reuse this cell and uh this cell will be using the same set of channels right so there will be interference in between these two cells and this interference is known as the co channel interference okay so if these two cells are very close to each other who are using the same set of frequency channels then there will be high co channel interference at in, in between these two cells so how we can uh, we can eliminate this or how we can uh, reduce this type of uh, channel interference we can reduce the co channel interference by making a distance between uh, these two co channel cells larger one so if we if we increase the cluster size let's say if i have seven cluster size here so in seven cluster size you can see the distance between this and this is higher as compared to four cluster size or three cluster size so if we are increasing the gap between uh, the co channel cells then the co channel interference can be reduced a bit so here you can see that uh, this is a seven cell uh, seven cell uh, cluster size okay and this is a this is a this is a so in seven cluster size you can see uh, this is the main cluster okay this is the main cluster fine and in this main cluster you can see that uh, a are using the same set of channels okay so this is the first tier this is the second tier and this is the third tier it means in first tier we have some neighboring uh, uh, co channel interference uh, cells in second tier we'll be having some co channel interference cells in third tier and likewise so we can reduce uh, the cells which are very far from uh, this particular base station but we have to consider the first tier uh, interference cells so first tier interfere if i want to see here for seven cell are the six, one two three four five six so these are the six uh, neighboring cells 
which are providing or which are creating the interference for this particular A. Okay, so here we can see for n equals to 7, this uh, I naught will be 6. I naught means the cells which are uh, which are providing the interference, co-channel interference. So, we can reduce this co-channel interference if we are increasing the gap between the clusters or we can say if we are increasing the cluster size. Okay, so likewise for n equals to 3, n equals to 4, n equals to 7, likewise and so on, 3 and 4 will be creating more co-channel interference as compared to 7, 12, 19 and so on, right. So, one can say like we can go for 19, we can go for 21. So, here is the, uh, that uh, trick because if we are increasing the cluster size, then the repetition will be uh, less for a for a, a geographical area if we are increasing the cluster size then we cannot repeat that cluster much and if the repetition is low then the capacity will be low so that's why i told you like if there is a trade off between the cluster size based on the capacity and based on the interference so we have to judicially decide what cluster size we have to take keep it in mind the capacity and the interference so the second point uh, type of uh, interference is the adjacent channel interference. So, adjacent channel interference, adjacent channel interference is the interference which is basically you can say uh, occurs between two different cells, okay, two different cells which are having the frequencies available which are very close to each other. So, very close to each other means, let us say if this is the spectrum and here we can see this. So, let us say this is cluster 1. Uh, and this is cluster 8, okay, and we have cluster 7, uh, cluster value is 7. So, this cluster 1 and cluster 8 are using the frequency channels which are very close to each other, okay, here we can see. So, these two cells are using the set of channels which are very close to each other or you can say the adjacent to each other. So, that is why at the receiver side, if receiver is not very proper, so it can get some channels or it can get some signal from the neighboring cell. So, because of that, it will create interference and this interference is known as adjacent channel interference, which will be uh, coming because of the this thing, okay. So, how we can reduce uh, this adjacent channel interference? We can reduce the adjacent channel interference by judicially deciding the receiver type, okay, and by providing very good filter. Okay, so very good filter means we we should have a filter which will be receiving which will be receiving only this much range signal and this much range signal. Second, by properly assigning the frequency to the neighboring cells. Okay, so that these neighboring cells will not be having the adjacent channels allocated. So if we are uh, properly deciding the set of frequency channels allocation and if we are providing the proper filter here, then by this we can reduce the uh, adjacent channel interference. So, this is enough for this video. We will discuss the next topic in the next video. Thank you very much.